Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University. We're up here at Scapoose, Oregon with Jim Vanek of Sportcopter. And here's the M2. We were here, there's a video previous to this, if you look back in the archives, there's a video of this where we came up and Jim spoke to us in detail about one they were building and the, some of the design features of it. Today we're going to fly it. Yep. Good. So, uh, Jim, thanks very much for having us again. Thank you for coming. And um, tell us some of the... Uh, the well, the, the unique features, of course it's a gyroplane, the blades are not powered, but we have a pre-rotor, and our pre-rotator, depending on the blade, we can get up to 350, that's way above flight speed. Flight speed generally about 330, right in there, but these blades will actually get in the air at 275, break ground, it's pretty amazing. And that's one of the reasons this machine takes off so fast and why it performs like it does. And um, obvious things, the chin bubbles, not more visibility, and the pylons are narrow here, better visibility. And we uh, put in this top, which is really nice, uh, glass top. And, and when you're banking the aircraft, you can see out the roof, and that way you can see other traffic as you're banking. This machine is aerobatic. I can loop and roll this aircraft. It's very unique. I don't have a restriction, anything above 40 degrees of pitch or 60 degrees of bank like my competitors. The other unique features is this whole machine is pre-preg carbon fiber and we have a castering nose wheel, adjustable rudder pedal rack, tow brakes, and you can adjust that rack. And the reason you do that is these seats are designed for uh, <clears throat> a hard vertical impact. So your thighs need to be at the right angle to protect your spine. So this machine has some unique features no other machine has in the world. In fact, a lot of airplanes. And one of those is the free castering nose free wheel. Free castering right? nose wheel. So when you're ruddering, you can see the nose will actually turn. And that happens when I rudder the aircraft, the nose will swing automatically just from the wash. So of the, it won't yeah. ever well, you could come in crooked, 20 degrees or more, and touch down. I've got videos and of me boom. landing crabbed, and the machine just whips straight all by itself. So what's nice about that is... But that's when one would roll over normally, right? Correct. And what's nice about that is when you're correcting for crosswind and your nose comes down, you never have to worry about the machine getting out of control. And the rest of the world, that's how they do it. They connect it directly. And what happens is that the fork goes forward. And then when you come down a little crooked or you're cor corrected for crosswind, you can't catch it fast enough. It's impossible. So it's an extreme safety feature. And for rough field use, the trailing link suspension is amazing how well it works. And then, of course, we have shocks on the main gear. And if I uh, push that around, you can see it. And so I could be five feet in the air and below the landing and drop right in and this the gear comes down about 11 inches and it absorbs that impact and no other auto gyros have got shot not absorbed. yet but i believe this part we're getting copied right now but not not everything so the other unique feature is the in-air suspension i think since the last time you were here this might be brand new uh, the mass can move up and down and also orbit and absorb the help absorb the two bump per rev so when we bank a hard turn, it's just dead smooth. It's really nice. There's a little bit of movement in it right now and because now, of these big blades. Because that means less wear, less... Uh, less wear and tear, less uh, the nodes of frequency are smoother, makes everything last longer. And I've been flying this really hard before we put any of them out. Okay, so the adjustable, adjustable rudder pedal rack. Uh, you're ruddering, you have toe brakes, but you can just simply pull this back and you can get way back here so somebody like five foot two it fits them and then uh, people all the way up to six six it works really good because the seat doesn't move seat doesn't move pedals have to move right. but it also gives us the proper angle for spinal protection so there's some unique features on these sport copters jim just explain some of the pre-rotator um, features on it yes so <clears throat> i decided that for training purposes dual control but it needs to be on the outside because this particular machine is made for mustering cattle. So we want things out of the way like the U control and then both the throttles are connected and the pre-rotator handles are connected. But I wanted to make sure that nobody forgot to disengage the rotor brake. So right here, you see this little button right here lifts up and it disengages and I lift it up and I push that down and it locks. Now, if you completely forgot, I, when I grab the pre-rotator, getting ready to pre-rotate, I pull this up, automatically disengages. Demonstrate that again. Grab the pre-rotator, disengages. Now when I grab the pre-rotator, come up and it locks, 
and then <clears throat> it's a clutch and as it spins up you're slowly tightening it then you're revving the engine up and then you simply pull back let go and take off really easy to operate so what would happen if you took off with your pre-rotator still engaged well you wouldn't because it'd be like taking, it'd be like landing with your gear gear up. Okay, uh, okay. It's just a procedure you don't yeah. do. What would happen is you'd feel it, you'd feel the vibration in the system, and you might have to add a little bit more rudder because okay. you're. Have I engaged it in the air? Hell yes, because it makes a slower approach. But I don't. Uh, you can really get slow adding five, just five RPM. But you have to stop a lot of pedal in, and you could over torque it. Okay. So we've heard the theories and we've seen the machine. Now I get the privilege of fl flying with Jim Vanek. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's do it. What's it like climbing into a machine that you built and designed from zero? The first time? Interesting because you've got a bunch of parts that you're flying <laughs> in the air with. That's what it feels like. <laughs> When you think about it, that's truly what's happening. I know, it's just like... A bunch of tubing that you're flying on. And you're remembering that weld you did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, trust me, during the construction, I'm looking at everything. The welding and every little tiny piece. So just talk through the, the process of various things. Yeah, okay, so um, right now I just use the trim system to trim up, you know, to um, make sure that I can just put it right here. Um, this has got the stock box, so what it's doing is I'd automatically adjust the pitch of the prop. I don't like that feature, and so we're trying not to use it anymore, is the plan. And uh, just because, you know, it's a kind of hokey system, I don't... Because you never know when it bites in really good. I want, I want fine pitch, I want fine pitch, you know. But it, it, it's, it, it's working. Um, I, I did my started it and then the EMS goes off and I'm just setting the altimeter and everything like you normally would. Um, are, we, are we really at sea level? 555 feet above. Wow. Yeah, we really are. Uh huh. And down there is like a lot, about 20 feet lower. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. You, it actually registers. Okay, so now uh, rotor brake is disengaged and rotator is engaged and I barely move it. I barely, the first place the first location and now what that's doing is it's slipping the belt ah yes okay because that's a 30 foot diameter you know with a five inch wheel driving 30 feet so you you've got to give it time to to spool up so i move a little one notch at a time like right there and, and, just, and then there's a point where it's direct drive right no slipping coming up here in a second you'll hear it synchronized right now you're starting to hear that noise yeah like that and we're fully engaged and then from there I can spin up but there's no point in it because I can taxi and have the rotors gone so the stick comes all the way back and a little forward that way I can always feel the flap and yeah you're farther forward that's good so I got the stick back and taxiing unlike a lot of other brands they don't do that, and that's because of the nose wheel being connected. It's too, it's too spooky to do both. To have the rotors turning and taxiing around. So that's road to speed now. It's yeah. 99. Yep. Now it's 100, and, and while I'm taxiing, it's going to spool up. I got too much vibration on that camera. Oh no, it, it dampens it all out. No, yeah, well, we'll see. Really, That's a weird note of frequency. I was wondering what that was going to do. There's going to be a brace here for the window, and I haven't put it in yet. It doesn't need it, but um, I'm going to put it in in case of a rollover. This becomes then like a the, 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 the panel becomes a rib to the frame to the top. Right. So it keeps it from uh, like a trouble zone, you know? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cross uh, over to Alpha now, and I'll do a takeoff run there and just fly around once just to check it all out, and then we'll land, and then they're probably still getting ready. We've got the traffic, uh, red sport cup to depart on the Alpha taxiway, one five. Uh, 
and sky blue traffic. There'll be uh, jar plane traffic over the east open field at 500 feet and below. Uh, near the uh, taxiway, or the using taxiway alpha. Alrighty. So now, with all this freeness that we have with the pre rotation, and rather than grinding the pre rotator to death, um, I'm using our forward speed to spin. And Smooth carrier traffic, runway there it is. to Lima, turning left downwind, runway 15, touch and go. Scooper traffic, Skyhawk 1672, turn away, final runway 15, touch and go. I'm going to do a thing called balancing as part of the training. So what I'm doing is I pull the stick back all the way when the blade is spun up enough, and right in here, the nose will get light. There it is. So I can taxi with the nose up and rudder back and forth. I can wiggle the rudders, touch the nose, and back up again. It just doesn't matter. She's great, isn't she? Oh, yeah. And the prop has to pitch a little bit. Let me get my speed up. And here we go. Here. <laughs> now they weren't ready for that. There's a flame. Yeah. It's how they up one on my one side of the traffic. Can you hear me there? Yeah, I can hear you. They were filming with the drones. Okay. We're driving from towards the lane on left base, runway 15. This is going. Notice how I climbed out of the turn? Because the motor's pushed up. There's something right there. Look at that. Parachute or something. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's not good. See, I can trip this thing up whatever way I want to go. Huh. That's like some sort of uh Weather balloon. Maybe. Looks like smoke almost. Oh, I'm gonna land and see what they're up to. I'll do a I'll do a turn here, that way they, the drone can see me and he can practice a one thingy jiggy. You can't do this in your average gyrocopter, swiveling in around no. in its own space. There's that 172. Yeah, yeah there's the uh, drone. Go whack it with the rotor blades. Get down here a little bit and spin and launch. I'll get down to this tree right here. Traffic coming forward to Lima on the upwind runway 15, remaining in the pattern. So, how come you can do such dramatic turns on the ground without precession of the blade trying to tip it over? I keep it flat. Oh, okay. Um, Skyhawk 1672, Charlie turning left base runway 15. If the stick was back and you turn, then the blades would flap. Oh, yeah. But because I. So traffic coming forward to Lima, left crosswind runway 15, touch and go. It's, it's like that thing went further away or something. Huh. That's just weird. Yeah. Uh, he's videoing us right now for this. This is going to be good. So you want to get 200? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. They're not going to take off quick. I never set anything up to do that.
Southbound is running through Lima, now turning left down land, runway 15. Gotta get the RPM back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know, I'm going to one side. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Station 8273 Zulu descending out of 4,500, about seven miles west, excuse me, east of the airport, over the river. We are uh, descending in conjunction with a uh, unmanned balloon that is descending over the river in this area as well for gap traffic. Unmanned balloon. He's what? just getting descending with an unmanned balloon. Interesting. Military traffic, Revan 4 to Lima, turning left base, runway 15. Hold stop. Get from. Traffic, Pacer 7822 Delta, over Sturgeon Lake, we're inbound for the 45 for runway 15. Good news. Good news, Alex. Yeah, I had 1672 Charlie turning left across the runway 15. Okay, there's the drone. Nope, that's not the drone. I thought I saw it. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a bit of a over to Lena and turning final runway 15. Let's see if it's not via Bravo. I don't know. Oh, there's the drone. Good to see you, Travis. Yeah, I have 1672, it's turning up down on the highway 15. Good to see you, Travis. Pacer 7822 Delta is on the 45. We've got the downwind traffic inside, we'll follow behind. It's hot and fat with people and fuel. You've got to be careful, you know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything stupid. Where's that drone at? I don't see it. kind of like lunch that it does. It's repitching itself is what it's doing. Which is fine, but you know what's weird is that the wind's blowing this way and that object went the other way. That's, it, that's interesting. Good boost traffic, Pacer 7822 Delta is in the downwind for full stop runway 15. Good boost. This captain carry traffic, just be aware there is a uh, balloon descending over the river directly. East of the airport. Currently descending to 2,500. So, look for, look for the drone. Where do you see it at? I don't know where it's at. The British Average Sky has 1672 Charlie, turning left face, runway 15. I 
is descending over the river probably about 1,500 feet and uh, directly east of the airport. Skepu. Skepu Charlie, Sky Hawk 1672 Charlie, I'm on my one side. Land it right near them. Yep, and I'll jump out. Yep, and we'll get some of you doing maneuvers. Something in the land. There's the ground. Okay, boost traffic, Baser 7822 Delta is turning base for 15. And flare time. <laughs> oh, wow. That's what you don't get used to as an airplane, is I can stop. God, it's just so short. Uh, it could be way shorter than that if I want. So, we survived that. That was absolutely fantastic. Jim, thanks very much. Um, I hope Good job, by the way. Yeah, bam. Yeah. Um, if you like this video, we have many others. We have a, a prequel to this video and then a lot of other different videos on the channel. Just click on the little subscribe down here and click on the bell and you'll get uh, notifications of other videos similar to this. So this is Mark at Skywagon University in Scapoose with Jim Vanek with the uh, M2 gyrocopter. So uh, thanks for watching.